last year I bought this E46 330Ci, took it straight to the autocross, and then started modifying it for autocross. This winter, the theme was rebuilding the suspension and making it stand up to the abuse I intend to put it through this year. We start by throwing the entire Condor Speed Shop catalog at it. We redo all the bushings in the back with UHMW or spherical where possible. New camber arms so we can dial in our setup. And then we also got the M Factory 1.5 way mechanical LSD to go with our 3.38 to 1 rear diff. This is going to make a huge difference when accelerating, pulling out of corners at autocross speeds, when you can't downshift, and also the LSD is going to help us put down extra traction. I did this in my garage over the course of the winter, ripped out the rear subframe, and started looking for cracks and then reinforcing. All right, here we are underneath the subframe out. This is the passenger rear mount, looking good, no cracks. Moving over, we have the driver rear mount, also no cracks. Up here, you can see this is a little bent. I think that's for me taking it out, but again, no cracks. And this is the passenger front, also no cracks. Man, I love that optimism, but we did find a crack. Uh, we just ground it out, welded it up, no big deal. Given these reinforcement plates, custom fitment. So I'm not the best welder, but I did a good enough job sticking it together. Maybe a little extra to it, but ground it flush and it worked great. Along with reinforcing the rear subframe, we refreshed all the brakes, calipers, pads, discs, uh, painted the subframe, made sure there were no cracks. Here's the monoball rear trailing arm bushing. Got it all back together and put back in the car just in time for the season to start. But then I decided to try and tackle the front and add some more there. All right, so under here, we put on new SLR roll center adjusters that involved putting in spherical bearings here and then it also comes with this nice spherical, spherical bearing you can see this is the original steering pickup point and now it's moved inboard meaning you have more range of motion it's more angle but it also steers quicker you can see i've welded in replacement or reinforcements for the suspension that's because this cross member was bent originally i bought a z3 rack and it's, you can tell it's a steel body. However, it happens to have a leak, so I'm gonna have to rebuild it. Uh, I think I'm gonna run it depowered for now and see how awful that is and go forward. I've removed the oil pan just so I can get to this nut. It's a left-hand thread and it's the oil pump nut and it likes to be loose and come off with high RPM. And so instead, I have a wired nut. It has a safety wire in there. And we'll put that on, wire it up. And that'll let me rev this thing out and not worry about my oil pump nut coming off. We have um, our SLR camber or uh, caster, um, adjustable caster lollipops. And they're just maxed out on caster. Uh, and then while I was under here, I just cleaned stuff up. Uh, I put in a new oil level sensor. That's about it. What's left to do is we have to get this exhaust back and mounted back up. Um, and then I think we're good to go. On the top of the engine, uh, we had a little more difficult time. So we installed the M50 manifold that replaces our M54 manifold you can see the runners are just nice straight um, and it's supposed to promote more airflow with that we did the seems legit 
uh, adapter kit, which came with this kit to the 330 throttle body, as well as um, these brackets to hold on the fuel rail. You did have to trim the fuel rail a little bit and then also redo some of the wiring here. Specifically, there used to be a temp sensor up here. Now it's on the bottom over here and threaded in. And so that came through this injector wiring harness and then came up. So you had to back it out and then I ran it through here. Uh, there's a little hole between the, the runners there. And so it goes down and plugs in there. Um, one of the things the Seams Legit Racing Kit didn't have, uh, I got the whole kit, so it had injector spacers, had this throttle body adapter, everything it had bolted up perfectly as expected, with the exception of this elbow. This elbow came out a little long and hit my shock tower, so I just trimmed about half an inch off of it, maybe a quarter of an inch, um, so that I'd move it inboard this way just a little bit. And then I had to get this adapter that went from I want to say 300 millimeters to 350 millimeters. The mass airflow sensor on the 330 is larger than what this is coming out. Uh, so you had to adapt up. Uh, I used the little plastic piece from the 330 uh, intake. It went between the first rubber hose and the second rubber intake pipe. Um, I used that there to just make this adapter here. Um, the brake booster, I. I plumbed into this existing one. Uh, this is the T. I plugged this for now. I'm going to figure out how to map it or how to route it in front of my throttle body. I also need to get this hose connected. That's my EVAP hose, uh, and that also should go in front of the throttle body, but after the mass airflow sensor. Um, to attach the fuel pressure regulator, um, I think that's what it was. Whatever this vacuum thing is here, I went and I put a quarter inch NPT barb to quarter inch NPT um, bar uh, <laughs> thread adapter here and plug that in. I'm gonna have to take this off and put another one for my catch can. This is a PLM catch can. Uh, we're running from here up into here this is the factory hose uh, and i just cut it and it has this nice barbed three quarter inch and then this is a five eighths and so we'll do five eighths to three quarter into here and then from here we're going to run this three eighths hose it's on a swivel an we'll run it over and back into that barbed fitting that we were talking about over here all right with them 50 manifold we had to tear apart this wiring harness. Make sure to label it because a lot of these plugs will plug into multiple things uh, and it can get a little confusing if you install the intake and then are trying to figure out where it all goes. Um, I went ahead and ported just a little bit, knocked off and rounded out the edges because the intake runners on the M50 are oval where it's a D shape out of the M54. These are quarter inch NPT threaded to barbed of various diameter. Uh, I think I did three eighths on this barb and slightly smaller on that one. It might be quarter inch. Then to keep me planted, I went and got a racing seat. I used the planted bracket from Condor Speed Shop, of course, and got it installed. It was pretty painless. Just drill a couple bolt holes and mount it up. Next was breaking in the rear diff. Just listen to that guy struggle. I put this on my new 360 cam, trying it out, uh, and of course it fell over and slightly chipped the lens, but, oh, painful. I made about 30 minutes of driving in circles in various directions, and then figure eights, and then I put about a few hundred miles on my diff and swapped out the fluid, which is close to the proper break-in procedure. I might not have gone quite far enough. It was still making some sounds as I got to my first event, but afterwards it sounds great and the traction is just unbelievable. I threw it on a scale just to see how much it weighed, 3,350 pounds. 
morning guys we are on our way out to our first autocross of the season we're in the e46 330ci uh, this is the first time running it since winter in any competitive manner uh, i got about 200 miles of break in on my uh limited slip differential i changed the gear oil last night and we're gonna see how it does currently it's a little wet it might rain later tonight but the clouds are looking favorable uh, i'm pretty excited about that really we're just trying to shake it down see how it feels i can already tell you it feels substantially quicker that's due to the 3.8 3.38 rear differential uh, that we put into it and then i also put the m50 manifold and raised the red line so now we can rev it out more and we accelerate quicker through the gears there's no well there's maybe a slight power bump with the m50 but it moved that that peak power up higher in the red line which is where we're going to be for autocross anyways uh, i can say like it doesn't feel as strong like from a 2000 rpm volt however it, be, it just keeps going it used to have a flat spot and it just kind of like it doesn't matter if i take it from like 4500 to 6000 it just kind of feels man, constant and now it keeps gaining so that's pretty exciting uh we are on our kumo v730s and in the wet they don't get much traction uh especially like pulling out of starbucks and stuff um so we'll see how it does on the autocross course. Hopefully enough cars run to warm it up uh, and we can get some bite. Well, it decided to try and rain on us uh, midway through. As the laps progressed, the track dried up a little bit, but you can really feel the difference with the LSD. You're not just lighting off the inside tire. This is set up with soft front bar and full soft rear bar, which felt good. I'm going to change it for my next event just to play with it, but overall it was very neutral with a little bit of push on the rear um, under acceleration. Jumping in my next run, I have a lot to improve as a driver. Uh, you can see I'm either going in too slow and not maintaining speed up to the corner and braking late, or I'm giving the cones a wide berth where really I should be hugging them. This was good. And in fact, this was probably one of my better runs. I hit the last cone and throw it away at the end, but overall, felt really great and I think I'm just going to get faster and faster as the season progresses. So after this, it felt really good. We took it back. I decided to get tuning software, put a tune on the car myself, gave it some launch control. I'm still dialing that in. There's a little stutter when I actually launch, but before it disables launch control. My next event was down in Eugene. For this event, I switched up how my bars were. I read online that a stiffer front bar and a soft rear was what the E46 is like, so I tried that out. I went full stiff in the front, full soft in the rear. I didn't like it. I was understeering everywhere and uh, I mean, it was also wet, but ultimately I think I'm going to go back to full soft in the front and maybe even give it a little more rear bar. Maybe that's because of my uh, geometry correction kit. And so instead of solving the lack of camber with a sway bar, we have solved it with that geometry kit. Again, I did pretty good for this event. Um, but I only finished in the middle of the pack. I was fighting understeer the whole time, but also my lines are horribly off. In this corner, there's gravel on the outside, and this is constant speed.
and then if you mess it up, you get behind in this little gated slalom. I kept over slowing for this corner, so I tried to come in hot, and I missed the gate, as you can see there. You can hear the stutter right there when the traction control stuck on a little too long. As I was going through this event, I kept feeling the clutch get spongier and spongier. All this extra traction from the LSD and launching it to test and then launching it through these last two events really took its toll on this stock clutch. This is overall my best run. Here I still over slow for this last corner, but not nearly so much. conditions kept getting worse and worse. I was trying to goose it and get the back end out and it just wasn't having it. As I go around and come through the slalom you can just fight understeer, barely made the gates. But overall it was a bunch of fun. I brought my cousin with me to introduce him to it and he had a blast and so it's a win in my book but then of course on the way home it was an hour out from the event my clutch starts slipping any throttle in fifth gear and the revs would climb but the speed wouldn't as i kept test driving it around um, it got worse and worse to the point that second gear was no longer holding and so now we are down, missing a few events as we put in a new clutch and flywheel. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe and stick around. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you like my narration over the autocross or if you just want to see more laps. Thanks, guys.